In this video, I'm going to deconstruct what it's like to have your heart shocked. I know there's a lot of confusion, a lot of trepidation about this procedure, and I just want to assure you that this is very, very common. As an emergency physician, I did this procedure hundreds of times. It was not uncommon to do this procedure multiple times on a single uh, shift, and I absolutely loved it. I love being on the uh, the delivery end of it, and uh, being on the receiving end of it is totally fine too. It's uh, it made me feel so much better than I did in this scenario. So what you're seeing here is I'm just in the uh, critical care bay of a local emergency department, and I'm hooked up to a bedside monitor, which is what she's looking at. You can see here on my arm, these little, these little uh, square pads with tabs on them. These are for a 12 lead EKG. This is what they use to capture and diagnose the problem. In my case, this was atrial fibrillation with episodes of rapid response, which my heart would you know take off uh, racing anywhere from 140 to 180 beats a minute, which uh, is about like running a, a the end of a triathlon. So it didn't feel great and particularly being in it all night, didn't like it either. So I'm here in the emergency department uh, asking to be cardioverted, which is the technical term for uh, using electricity to resolve this issue. It's a very, very common standard practice. I know people are oftentimes freaked out about it. And that's partly why I'm recording this video is I just want to dispel some of the myths and to explain what's happening here and to make it uh, very clear. So I have an IV hooked up and running here. Um, you can vaguely see a little mark in my neck here. This is from an IJ catheter that was placed during my surgery. I had an aortic uh, repair done, uh, consequence of probably uh, years of overtraining and uh, excessive lifting along with some genetics. But anyways, that catheter allowed more precise measurement of internal pressures, uh, oxygen saturations, a variety of things that the critical care physician utilized in my immediate post-op period to keep me alive because that was a very difficult night. But blood pressure cuff and then these here are uh, three leads. There's 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 one here and uh, one on the other side and another one down over here. And that is what's hooked up to the bedside monitor, which is what she is looking at. You have a scribe here capturing the information and then you have the emergency physician here who I had to persuade that I needed this procedure because I felt crappy from it. So this here is a magnet. You should see this in any critical care emergency department bay that you go to. This is used for people with pacemakers that malfunction. You can place this on the chest over the pacemaker and it will change the way the pacemaker is functioning. I don't have a pacemaker. I don't need this, but if you're not seeing this stuck on the crash cart, this device here is the crash cart. And this is when patients are crashing. There's drugs in here. There's uh, tubes for intubation in here. There's a variety of airway equipment, suctioning equipment, uh, all the things that you would need if a person just basically hits the dirt uh, in front of your eyes. This is You need to have this everywhere in any emergency department. They have them scattered throughout the hallways. You're going to see them when you visit loved ones. They're usually locked when they're in common patient areas. This one is not locked, obviously, because they get in here and out of here all the time on any given day. So I'm going to kind of fast forward through this because parts of it are a little bit boring. Um, the, the, the uh, nurse uh, anesthetist is going to come in here shortly and uh, just talk about, yeah, see so they're debating about whether I'm in AFib or not, which I assured her. This is a student who I encouraged to go ahead and deliver the shock to me when it was time. And then here, this is the nurse anesthetist. She's just getting the monitor set up the way she wants it. She is going to administer a drug called propofol. It's thick, it's white, it looks like milk. It burns like hell when it goes in, but it hits like a freight train. Like literally by the time she pushes that through, uh, the the uh, IV that was in my forearm up into my brain, 30 seconds later, I'm already going off into la la land. So what you see vaguely here is a large pad about the size of a half a loaf of bread. There's one of these uh, there, and there's one that I think in this scenario was on my back. You can also put it down lower. And this is allowing the electrical charge that they're going to deliver to pass through my chest wall, heart, and out the other side, essentially uh, delivering electrical charge to my heart to reset the rhythm, which is very common. It's It sounds scary as hell, but it's very common. It's done in emergency departments every day, thousands of times around the United States, every single day. I guarantee you that. I've done it myself. I've had it done three times myself. I've done it to, to uh, fellow colleagues, fellow emergency department staff. Uh, it's just extremely common to do this procedure. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. So normally when I would deliver this drug, I would push it quite rapidly. That allowed you know pretty quick sedation. Uh, she gave it sort of uh, slowly over time, which caused the sedation period to be a little bit prolonged in terms of taking full effect. But you can see I'm getting a little bit sleepy. So that beeping you hear that's going a little bit irregular, that is my heart. It's not terribly fast because I was I took a few extra doses of a beta blocker before I came in uh, just to slow it down a little bit. Um, but she's going to give me a little bit more here. And you can see I'm, eyes are still open, but a little bit spacey there. 
She's just kind of watching, waiting for the show to go. Essentially, I'm going to speed it up here for you because this is boring. I think I'm pretty well out there. Yeah, she's just kind of tweaking my eyelids. It's not uncommon to like rub somebody's uh, eyelashes when you're sedating them just to see if they have a blink response. Uh, blink response is one of the primal things. It's something we would test regularly in the uh, ICU setting to see whether a patient was truly sedated and also to check for brain stem type of activity. And um, there's also corneal reflex, gag reflex, and other things of that nature, which we won't get into here. I'll skip it ahead a little bit. I think we're going to get uh, a little bit of uh, excitement here. So that beep that you hear there, that loud continuous tone beep, that means that the machine that's going to deliver the shock, the defibrillator device, which you can't see in this picture, it's off the edge of the bed here. This is the wires that run to it. That means that it's synchronizing to the R wave on the EKG, which you unfortunately you can't see here because of the angle, but it is synchronized to that. So it'll deliver a charge in a safe phase of the cardiac cycle. If you deliver it in the wrong phase, it can actually cause the heart to go into fibrillation, which is a much more dangerous and potentially lethal rhythm. So it does happen from time to time, even though the best efforts are made. I've had it happen to myself before. I've had it happen with medications. It just Fortunately, the, the pads are on, the patient's sedated, you just deliver another, another charge. You just work through the algorithm and don't panic and just think. And uh, the physicians know what to do. They've done this drill thousands of times before. And so it's it, it's fun. It, it's exciting. I still like doing it. And and, and uh, I would rather not have it done to me again. But if I needed it, it's not a big deal. I mean, it's just, it's just so commonplace. So anyways, here we go. Their code, you can hear coaching the, uh, I think the, the PA student or the nursing student, I can't remember specifically, med student, whoever, t how to operate the machine, which is totally normal. She's probably freaked out that she's doing this to a patient for the first time and that I myself am an emergency physician and so she just want to screw up, but there's really no way to screw it up. The machine does the uh, heavy lifting for you. You can see from the look on my face that that probably hurt, but I had no recollection of it. I don't remember any of the shocks I've ever received through this procedure. Maybe a little sore afterwards, but I'm still healing from a split sternum from the surgery, so no big deal. It wasn't like I, I was any extra sore the next day than I was during this particular period of time. On TV, you're going to often see people with the, the paddles. They're rubbing the paddles together. They're putting them on the patient. They're shocking the patient. They're making it all dramatic. And that's that's fine. That You can still do that. I've done that before in, in a hurry when I don't want to get the packs open and get the pads on. You just grab those things off the, uh, the machine, and they're ready to go. But the theory was in the past before the technology changed that by applying additional pressure to the chest wall, you could compress some of the air out of the lung. You could get the paddles closer to the heart, closer to the chest cavity, and get a much better shock if you will. I think that was probably applicable back when there was monophasic devices, but now the standard is biphasic devices, at least in the United States. And I'm not an electrical engineer, but it just changes the way the current is delivered uh, through the chest wall. And it's a much, much more effective way of converting rhythms into normal sinus rhythm is what we're looking for. We're looking for just a steady uh, tempo, just do type thing. The nurse is going to print out a little strip here just to capture that and make it part of the permanent chart. And uh, nurse anesthetist is just confirming that. Oxygen probe fell off. Not a big deal. I'm, I'm plenty oxygenated. I don't have any lung disease, so I'm not going to drop my oxygen saturation. There you can see the propofol. You can see it's white and uh, it's very thick. And uh, that drug is like a magic. I've used that drug thousands of times in my career. And just kind of boring part waiting for me to wake up. The ED physician's checking just to make sure it sounds good to her. The student's going to come do her part as well, just part of the learning process. I'm totally open to being a, a teaching patient. Uh, I'm going to do another 12 EDKG just to confirm everything, which is what she's doing here. You can see she's putting additional stickies uh, on my chest and hooking this up. This is all painless. This is all just part of the process. We can see we are eight minutes in right now, so from... Uh, prep phase to sedation to shock to recovery, probably all said and done about 15 minutes. I'm still a little bit out of it here, but coming around, changing the oxygen tube there. And I'm awake, looking over at I think my dad. You can hear the normal beep, beep, beep in the background. Did you have a dream? Yeah. Really? 
Propofol is interesting. It's an amnestic, so I'm, what I'm saying right now is just total bullshit. I have no idea. I have no recollection of anything. But in my recollection, I've had this drug many times for different surgical procedures, orthopedic and otherwise. And typically, when it's given the way I typically would give it in the emergency department or my nurse would give it, it was a rapid IV push. I always felt like Superman. I was like felt like I was just flying. And, and so it was a sort of a... And a very interesting experience. So this one was given slower, so it was more gradual onset and wasn't, I don't really remember anything about it, honestly, because that's how the drug works. So that is that is elective cardioversion done for atrial fibrillation in an emergency department in a critical care setting done by an emergency physician, a nurse anesthetist, a uh, ER nurse, and uh, some type of student that I can't remember. So I hope you found that helpful. If you find value in, in this, what I'm sharing here, please share this with people. I know people are just just freaked out when they hear about this happening or needing this procedure done. And it's very, very common. It's very, very safe. And uh, yeah, be safe, be well. Take care.